Amen. Uh, if you've got your Bibles, I'm going to be preaching out of 2 Corinthians chapter 6 this morning. And uh, this scripture has came upon my heart. And for a reason. Last week, we had that storm that flip came by. That had a real strong wind. And that wind. We have a trampoline the kids play on. That we picked that trampoline straight up, looked about three hundred foot, about three hundred and some feet down the road, and set it down. And for this week, Jennifer's asked me just about every day, "Are you going to go down there and get that trampoline?" <laughs> and I kept on putting it off, putting it off, and I'm going to have to go and get that trampoline here soon. <laughs> but I started thinking about putting things off. And this scripture came to my mind. And a lot of times we put a lot of things off that we shouldn't be putting off. Amen. We try to wait till the last minute. My children at school, I don't know if your children like this, but mine, they wait till the very last minute to do their homework. <laughs> they get up the day of school and say, I, I got homework I got to get done. And they try to rush and get it done. We need to realize that we cannot put things off and and keep putting off. But if we got time, we need to make things get things done today. Yeah, yeah. All right, Second Corinthians chapter six. Is everyone there? Amen. All right, if you're there, won't we all stand? We're going to read three verses here. Verse number one. Says we then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in the time of Satan, and in the day of salvation I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry may not be be not blamed. Amen. You can be seated there. Amen. I started thinking about this, and I started thinking about putting things off. And I talked to Jennifer a little bit this morning, and she uh, told me a big, long, fancy night word for you. It's procrastinate. <laughs> and I had to ask her, what does procrastinate mean? She said, it means what you're teaching on or preaching on is putting things off. And we need to be careful about this because uh, uh, procrastinators, uh, they got a motto, never do, do today that what you can put off till tomorrow. Amen. <laughs> but I want you to realize something, that when God deals with you, and we talked about this in Sunday school, <clears throat> that he could only deal with you one time. Yeah. That's all that he's promised us is one time dealing with us. Now, if he deals with us anymore, he's shown mercy. Yeah. And shown grace and shown love. But we keep, as we talked in Sunday school, harden our hearts. He's going to quit dealing with us. Yeah. And it might come to a point where it's too late. Amen. And that's what I want to try to get out today is that we need to do today instead of putting off tomorrow. Amen. Today, not Sunday. Sometimes we keep saying, well, Sunday I'm going to do this or Sunday I'm going to do that. But when it deals with your soul, when it deals with your everlasting life, eternity, you better deal with it today. Amen. Because we are not guaranteed another tomorrow. I, I asked Danny right before church, and I asked him, I, I said, uh, have you ever heard that song? You can't be at bed still tomorrow. And he said, yeah, well, I used to sing it uh, with, uh, with uh, warning in him. But that's a lot of truth in that. Because we cannot beg or steal for another tomorrow. It's what we got today. And when God deals with us, today you better call out His name. And today you better make things right. Amen. Second, in the verse that we just read, it said that now is the accepted time. Now when God is dealing with you, now is the time to call out His name. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. If you are lost today, you've got an opportunity for this morning to call out His name and to accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Amen. 
We need to trust in the Lord today. Yeah. Why should we trust in Him? Because of several things. One thing is we need to trust in the Lord because life is so short and life is so precious, precious today. You know, the Scripture tells me that life uh, is as of a vapor. It's here and then it's gone. And the Scripture also says it's like a blade of grass. It grows up to be cut down. Yeah. One of these days of my life is going to be cut down. One of these days of my life as in the vapor is going to be gone. And yeah. i got eternity to look to. Yeah. I'm glad that I made my preparation some years ago. Yeah. If you had not made your preparation, I beg you, I plead with you, and the Scripture, uh, and the Lord deals with you, make today the day of salvation. Now, not tomorrow. A lot of people think, well, I'll wait till I'm an old man. I'll wait till I'm in a hospital. Or I'll wait till uh, some kind of health reasons with me. Well, you're not guaranteed to be an old man. You're not guaranteed to have an opportunity to lay in a hospital. Uh, there's a lot of people, if you open up the obituaries uh, that, uh, that died, thought that they'd have today to call out. They thought that they might have another year or another uh, uh, several years to call out his name. And when death comes, it has no respect of age. It has no respect of person. It don't matter how old you are, how much money you got. When death comes, it don't matter how good a person you are. Death is a coming, and we need to make preparation. Amen. 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 This life is short. And the, his life, death comes suddenly. A lot of people, when they have a major heart attack. They don't have time to call out. A lot of people, when they're in a car accident, they don't got time to call out. Right. A lot of times we think, well, well, I call out when I'm on my deathbed. You ain't going to be guaranteed to have a deathbed. But you're guaranteed this minute and that the Lord's dealing with you. And now he's going to accept the time. Yes, amen. Because uh, we need to trust in the Lord. Because sins is upon us right now. And if I didn't have the Lord in my life, the sins would have been uh, handed down. Uh, and uh, just like uh, in Belshazzar, uh, uh, I would have been fair warning. But praise God, when I accept the Lord in my life, Terry. I can got something to look forward to. Amen. I got something to work towards. I got something to uh, uh, go towards. I have zeal and go because my heart ain't here. It's laid up in tree. My treasures is in heaven, and that's where I want to go to. But if you don't know the Lord, your sentence is going to be hell. Yeah. If you don't accept Him, hell will be your home. And there's sorrow there. I tell you, if you ask the rich man, it's been over 2,000 some years since he's went to hell and he's still yet crying out. He's still yet begging for water. He's still yet trying to uh, call out for his family and friends. Uh, but it'll be too late. Amen. Don't wait till it's too late. Don't wait. Don't put it off. You know, the king of Griffith in the scripture, he, he said he was almost persuaded. He said, and talking to Paul, he said, it was hard for me to kick him on the prince when you talked to me and when you preached to me and you told me about this man named Jesus. I, I'm telling you, have you ever been in a service before and you found a preach man took a step all over your toes and you know what you're doing wrong and you, say, you never did give your life over, you never, never did come and pray. And, and that's what uh, Griffin was going through. That he was letting the Lord deal with him. And he said, that you almost persuaded me. Not only a grip, Griffin, but Felix. When Paul preached Jesus to Felix, Felix trembled and he was scared and he knew. And Felix even also said, when I have a convenient season, Felix said that he's going to put it off for another time. You know, death came knocking on Felix's door. And the scripture never does say it. Felix made things right with the Lord. So let me tell you, when you've got an opportunity to call out His name, you better take heed to it, and you better listen, because death could be coming, knocking on our doors, and we don't know when or where or what, how, but it's a coming. Amen. Amen. Until you make things right, hell will be your home. Yeah. Absolutely. 
We need to make preparations today on our soul. We need to make preparations today, not only if we're lost, to make things right, but if we're Christians, we need to make preparations today to serve the Lord today. Amen. Joshua spoke in 24 and 15, he said, And it is seen able unto you to serve the Lord. He said, Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether it be the gods of your fathers that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, who land ye dwell. But as for me, my house, we will serve the Lord. Every day when we wake up, I talk to a sister right before church, we are blessed to be able to open our eyes, to be able to see. We are blessed to be able to have our right mind in our head, to know who we are, know who our family is. And every day when we wake up and God blesses us with this, we got a decision in our lives that we're going to choose, we're going to serve the Lord, or we're going to serve the devil. You've got a choice every day when you wake up, if you're going to choose the cursings or you're going to choose the blessings. But as far as me and my house, I made it a point, I'm going to serve the Lord no matter what. No matter if sickness comes, no matter if uh, financial Amen. problems, uh, whatever's going on, I'm serving the Lord. Amen. We need to serve the Lord with all of our hearts. Our household needs to serve the Lord. If you don't serve the Lord today, you're outside of the will of God. Yeah. You can't serve the Lord one day and not the other. You can't hop one to another. I've seen it many times in a lot of churches. People hop from church to church. They get upset with one. They'll go to the other until they get upset there. And they'll go to another. Let me tell you something. If you're hopping around and jumping around, you're outside the will of God. When God deals with you, you better make things right. And you better come to Him. Amen. If you don't serve Him today, you're outside of the work for the Lord. we got work to do. We're all called disciples. We're all called out to be a witness. And we're all called out to give a testimony. We're all called out to try to bring as much as we can into the church. The Bible says go into all the world and compel them to come in. And that's what we need to do. But a lot of times we'll come out on Sunday, we'll open up our Bibles, we'll listen to the preacher, we'll amen, we'll shout, but come Monday and throughout the week we still get sick at the house. And I'll the I've seen it a lot of times people come and they'll act like an angel on service, church day, but they'll live like a devil throughout the week. You're outside the will of God. Amen. We need to be faithful to God in all of our work, yeah. whatever we do. We need to seek the Lord today. Seek Him while He can be found. He's here today. The Scripture tells me, heard it. Well, the two or three gathered. He's in the midst. He's in the midst today. If I seek after Him, I'm going to get the blessings. If I seek after Him, whatever questions I got, I can get answered. If I'm lost today, if I seek after Him, I can get salvation today. Amen. Amen. Isaiah says, Seek ye the Lord while He may be found. Call ye upon Him while He is near. Yeah. A lot of times we wait. Till sickness comes. A lot of times we wait till tragedy hits our home. Yeah. Sometimes we wait till we go through a trial or get down in a valley. But the Bible tells me I need to seek them today. Even if I'm on, a, on, on top of a mountain and everything's going good, I've got to seek them still yet today to keep me from getting down in the valley, yeah. to keep me getting uh, overcome with the trials of the devil he throws at me. I've got to seek after them today. Amen. Amen. I need to seek after him privately in my home. I need to seek after him openly in the public. I need to seek after him at all times. As a brother said, uh, you talk about prayer. And we need to be praying more and more. Uh, the Bible says that we need to pray without ceasing. Uh, that means get continuously throughout the day. Uh, we need to be praying. We need to be talking to the Lord. We need to seek after him throughout the day. Seek after them prayerfully. You might say, well, I ain't had no prayers answered. Have you even prayed lately? That might be the reason why you ain't had no prayers answered. The Bible says, if you ask in my name, it shall be given. 
So we went praying. I'm going to pray that I have faith that my prayer is going to get answered. Yeah. Yeah. In the book of Psalms, it says, says that the, the, uh, the uh, uh, prayers of uh, the heart, the, the heart, God hears and answers. Yeah. He sees more than what anyone else sees. He sees inside. He knows it. So we need to seek the Lord today. We need to ask for salvation today. We need to study the scriptures today. Uh, uh, it's where we uh, a lot of times don't don't uh, uh, live up to where we ought to. Even as of a pastor, I need to read more than what I do at home. I need to study more than what I do study. And I need to seek after more than what I do. But in 1 Kings 22 and 5, it says, Jehovah said, said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Today I need to read the scripture. Today I need to study. I need to study it on Monday. I need to study it on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, even Saturday. I need to study His Word. You know what happens when I study His Word? I get strength. I get strength. Spiritually and physically. I get strength. And that's Little sister talked. The devil, he will talk, deal with us, and he will throw things at us. But if I pray, and if I study his word, I got enough strength that I can say, Get behind me, Satan. Yeah. And he'll get behind me. Uh, and you know, if, if we talk to him, and we can deal with the spirit, and there is some evil spirits out in the world, and we just, just talk and read and study the scripture, and just, the Bible says that in the name of Jesus, uh, that they tremble and they shake and they're afraid. Uh, but a lot of times we try to deal with things ourselves, uh, and when we do, that's when we get in trouble. Yeah, you know, as of a Christian, the scripture says that. Our spirits that's wanting to get in. And if you open up that door, there's seven spirits coming in. Don't take our bow with you. That's the reason why someone who's back with <coughs> the Lord, someone who went back against back to the love of the world and the love of sin. That's the reason why it's seven times harder for them to come back to where they once was. Amen. So we need to be careful about what we let in. And if we study the Word, and we read the Word daily, we can keep that stuff away. We need a sanctification daily today. John 17, 17, sanctify them through the thy truth. Thy Word is truth. You know, this world will try to deceive. Our friends will deceive us. The TV, it'll deceive us. A computer is deceive us. And even in some of the uh, different versions of the Bible, even in them Bibles, sometimes, sometimes they deceive us because they take the Word of God out. And they take the blood out. They take a lot of things out. And we need to be careful about that. Amen. But we need to stay where we know is truth and righteousness and the right way. The fifth thing is we need to strengthen our brother today, not tomorrow. Hebrews 3 and 13, they exhort one another daily, not just once a week, not just once a month, but daily we need to exhort one another. We need to lift up one another. We need to encourage one another. At least any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. If we don't lift up people daily, if we don't lift up our brothers and sisters daily, we're falling in and we're putting ourselves in the category of deceitfulness and it is a sin. Have you uplifted anyone this week? Have you uplifted anyone today? Amen. If you ain't, I'm telling you, by the end of the day, you better do something in your life to uplift a brother or sister. Amen. Because you know what happens if you don't. We talked about this in Sunday school with Pharaoh. If you don't, your heart will start getting hard. And once your heart gets hard, 
all the preaching, all the witnessing that you're seeing won't affect you. Because you let your heart get hard. We talk about it in Sunday school. If you got a brother with a brother or a sister and you leave it alone, don't deal with it. It'll harden your heart. And it'll, it'll make you miserable for years and years to come. But if you deal with it when God puts it upon your heart, when God tells you hey, hey, what you're doing is wrong and you need to deal with it, you can get it taken care of. I've had stuff to deal with me before. And I tried to lay down and sleep at night. I couldn't get one way to sleep. Because I've had thoughts of what was going on in my life. And I realized that I had to get it taken care of. If I wanted a good night's sleep, if I wanted to uh, get, get back in the will of God, I had to deal with it right then and there. The scripture says, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. So a lot of times we lay down our head and we got a problem with a brother or sister or we got a problem with going, uh, going, something going in our lives and we can't get no rest at all. We need to strengthen each other before someone gets hurt. And we can hurt people. We can hurt people spiritually. We can hurt people by pushing them away. Pushing them away from church. Pushing them away from God. We can hurt people by our actions and by what we, what we do. But I'm telling you, before I want to hurt someone, I want to lift up someone. I want to pick them up and, and let them see that yeah, the love of Christ is more important than anything else in the world. A lot of times we get mad and we get upset for the uh, trivial things of this world. <clears throat> when the most important thing is, is our soul. We need to lift up to people today. We need to strengthen people today. We need to be a soul winner today. Not tomorrow, but today. We need to be a soul winner. First Chronicles 16.23 Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Show forth from day to day His salvation. Matthew 21.28 uh, But what think ye? A certain man had two sons and, and he came to the first and said Son, go work today in my vineyard. Today is a day that we need to try to win someone for Christ. Today is a day that we need to be a witness. Today is the day that we need to give a testimony. Today is the time that we need to uh, tell them all about Christ. How I many have done this before? As the Lord dealt with you to visit someone, and you thought, well, NASCAR's back on TV. I'm going to go home and get my lazy boy and turn on that NASCAR and watch him for Go 500 miles to turn in one direction. I've done that. And the Lord dealt with me and He whipped me. And He whipped me until I went mean, and done what I'm supposed to do. If you know to do good and do it not, I say this, I don't know how many times in the last several times I've preached. If you know to do good and do it not, it's a sin. And if God tells you to deal with, to talk to someone, God tells you to go and uh, witness to someone, God tells you to go and visit someone, and you brush them off and do your own thing in the world, uh, hey, it is a sin. And you can harden your heart that way. We've got to be a soul winner today. Because it's a personal responsibility to each and every one a child of God. Every Christian, we got a responsibility to be a soul winner, what you might say. Well, it's a pastor's job or it's a deacon's job. But no, God called us all in to be a witness and to call us all in to be soul winners. Amen. What is the fruit of a Christian? Another Christian. What does Jesus say? Can a tree bear not the fruit? He said, You might as well just hew it down, throw it in the fire. 
I don't want God to look at me and say, Brother Rick, could have been doing this. Uh, could have been being a soul winner. Could have been uh, witnessing where I could. Uh, and He'd uh, take all His blessings away from me uh, and take things uh, that, 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 he prom- or that He said uh, that He'll bless me with. Yeah. You know God can do that. God said it God say with our talents. Remember the people with the talents? One hidden and heard them. God came and took his talents. I don't want God to come and take my talents. I want to be obedient to them. I want to be a soul winner today. The pain, painful as it might be for me to, to do something that what God asked me to do, it's going to be a reward down the road. Amen. I don't want to have regrets. Why well, should have done it in the past? I don't want to have no regrets with any family members I could have witnessed to. I don't want to have no regrets to any neighbors or boys I used to work with that I didn't have to tell them about the love of Christ. I don't want to have none of regrets. I want to be a soul winner today for the Lord. I want to submit my life to the Lord. Amen. Today, Psalms 95 says, For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Isn't it? Today, if you hear His voice, harden not your heart as in a provocation, as in a day of temptation in the wilderness. If you hear God's voice and God is still with you, do not harden your heart today as the children of Israel did. Because you know when the children of Israel hardened their hearts, they started wandering around in the desert for 40 some years, not going to a place where they ought to be gone. I want to get to where God wants me to. I don't want to be wandering around in the desert. I want to be obedient. Amen. And the only way to do that is to be submit my life, submit myself to Him. Every day, every day in my life, I need to submit to Him. But if I delay it, if I push it off and say tomorrow, it's disobedience. It's destructive. It's destructive to your life. If I'm disobedient to God, it's destructive to my life. It's destructive to my wife's life. It's destructive to my children's life. And it's destructive to everyone around. If I'm disobedient to God, it's not only affecting me, but it's affecting all that's around me. And the Scripture told me I need to submit myself to Him daily. Today I need to do this. For the cause of Christ, I need to do this. Christ has called us out. Exodus 32 and 29. I'm going to be closing here in a second. For Moses had, had said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord. Even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you the blessing this day. So if I submit myself to him today, if I witness to him for him today, if I try to be a soul winner for him today, if I study his word today, if I do be obedient to him today, he said the blessings is going to come to me today. I want all the blessings I can get. Amen. I don't know about you. I want all the blessings I can get. I'm going to be selfish in that category. I can't hear that. But I want the Lord to look at me. And say, well done. Time to give people something. But if I don't do that, if I don't do this like that, I'm going to be losing out. If you don't respect the Lord today, you should be looking out at the table. Amen. Yes. That's the reason why it's so important. He deals with your heart. Yeah. But you know, you know the scripture says four four and ten and seven years. He didn't say that you're guaranteed that it's all you. Amen. He said it's a blessing. And if we do these, these seven years in a row, it's a blessing. God bless us. We can say. But I want you to realize how many times they came and not by teenagers' doors or children's doors. On people who's 20 or 30 years old, they've come to the 
don't tell that all the time. It's all the time. I'm not sure. So, so why do you die? 